What is the safest HVAC system you can buy for your home? In today's video, we're gonna talk about six different options for HVAC systems that we see commonly chosen today in residential when folks are installing new HVAC systems in their home. We're gonna talk about which ones are safe, which ones are maybe not so safe, and some of these may surprise you. In a world where we're talking about new refrigerants coming into our industry, and some of them, whether they're high flammability or low flammability, being above no flammability, is a concern for a lot of homeowners. And so because of that, I thought, well, let's talk about some of this. Let's talk about the different options and what actually is safe for your home. So let's dive into this six different systems. The first couple, we're going to dive into fossil fuel burning appliances. One of those being a boiler. Yes, we still see boilers installed today, especially with folks that live up north. Now, there are some that are gas burning boilers, some that are oil burning. Some boilers are hydro where they're full of water. Some of them are steam. We see less steam, I would say, in residential, at least in homes, but they're out there. I've worked on some of them. And I think boilers specifically, compared to other fossil fuel burning appliances that we'll get to in just a moment, if they're taken care of, they're fine. They're they're safe. There are guys that have been doing this for years. If they're maintained correctly and repaired correctly and taken care of, they're fine. There are thousands of homes across the country that still have boilers in them today. However, with the rest of the options that we're going to talk about on our list here, boilers I went over number one because I would say they're the least safe, partly because a lot of folks don't take care of them correctly. They don't have them maintained and they don't have someone that really knows what they're doing that take care of those boilers. And so, yes, they don't have flammable refrigerants necessarily, but they do have other things that can happen, such as carbon monoxide poisoning. And at the very worst, just Google boiler explosions and the internet is full of all kinds of accidents that have happened because of systems that were either not maintained or repaired correctly. And a boiler explosion is, in my opinion, something that if something explodes in your house, that's pretty dangerous. So that's why it's number one. Number two, is other fossil fuel burning appliances. So whether we're talking oil or gas, gas especially, I would say oil burning furnaces are still, I'm leaning towards less safe there. Again, partly because of maintenance and things like that. But if we look at gas burning furnaces, we are talking about an A3, we always, we always talk about A2L refrigerants. Well, what about that A3 gas piped into your home with an open flame there? And that does bring on a set of possible issues that could happen. In fact, that's another thing I'll, I'll sometimes tell folks, just Google that furnace explosion or furnace this or that. We also still have that risk of carbon monoxide poisoning. A lot of folks do not maintain carbon monoxide detectors in their home. I always tell people if they have a gas gas burning appliance in their home. Do not go to sleep tonight without a, a working carbon monoxide detector in your home installed correctly with batteries. But I'm hearing a lot of industry experts now coming out and saying whether you do or don't have gas burning appliances in your home, you should still have a carbon monoxide detector because of some of the other risks that are out there. Things like a uh, running car or even a neighbor's house that could possibly draft into your home in one way, shape or form. But furnaces are number two because of carbon monoxide, because of an open flame. Now we're starting to get towards systems that may actually have those A2L refrigerants in them, right? Because some furnaces can be paired with an air conditioning system or a heat pump system. And that coil mounted with that furnace does have refrigerant flowing through it. And number three is kind of a toss up. Three and four for me are heat pumps. So air to air heat pumps, but number four would be geothermal. So I'm gonna put those both together. In fact, I would maybe say geothermal might be a smidge less safe than an air to air heat pump system only because everything is now mounted inside the home from a standpoint of the refrigerant itself. So the compressor and all of that is now inside. Yes, you've eliminated that outdoor unit. You've now got water loops ran outside of the home, but you've now got more components in the home because of that. And so we've talked about the refrigerants. We've done other videos on A2O refrigerants. You should definitely check out. We dive deep into the problems, the safety issues, some of the things that's misinformation that there may be not as unsafe as some like to claim, but they do have their own things that come with them things that need to be done properly, things that need to be done to keep folks safe. And so whether you do have a heat pump, geothermal, 
whatever you've got, that all needs to be done correctly. But the other thing that bringing this all into the light, now we're talking about ducted conventional systems. So a heat pump or a geothermal system that now has ductwork installed into the home, that brings on other issues such as ductwork that's not sized properly, ductwork that could be dirty itself, ductwork that could have things like mold growing in it, right? So now we've got some other issues to maybe be a little concerned about there. But the other thing we see with these types of systems is especially in air conditioning mode, a lot of times they are not sized correctly. They're oversized and they're not running long enough. They're not removing enough humidity from the space. And now we've got a whole nother set of issues such as mold, things like that, that we need to be concerned about. And so that's the first four. Number five is mini splits. So mini splits are a little more safe, I would say, than those systems only because they a lot of times don't have ductwork at all. If they're ductless, there is a such thing as ducted mini splits these days, and you still got to be concerned about that. But even with those, they can be oversized. They can be not maintained correctly, and you do still have mold. You don't have as much ductwork that could have things hiding in it, but still could be a little less safe. And of course you got refrigerant with those mini splits. The interesting thing about mini splits that we didn't have to consider before is now they have poor filtration. A lot of the mini splits that we see installed that are ductless, they just have this little measly cheap filter. Now they're better than nothing for sure, but they're not going to have the same surface area, the same high MERV ratings or the ability to install bypass ducted HEPA filtration or electronic filtration. Some of the stuff we see out there that can really clean the air in a home, a lot of mini splits don't have that luxury. And so that's my first five. I'm gonna give you the best, most safest system that I've come across so far, but I do wanna give a couple honorable mentions to some of these smaller type systems, systems like window units we've seen in some people's homes. They bring in a whole plethora of problems. They are also sometimes breeding grounds for things like mold. Another honorable mention that maybe could have been number one on our list because of all the accidents that we've seen over the years are things like space heaters. Just Google that space heater accident and you'll see a whole lot of things that have happened revolving around those and how unsafe they can be. But finally, let's just get back to it. The safest HVAC system that I think you can buy for your home today. And that is a lot of the air to water technology that we've seen for years play a big role overseas that we're now starting to see reintroduced to the American market and becoming more of a thing, more companies offering that type of an, a system. So the idea is you would have a system that's outside the home, a unit that will create heat or AC in this all-in-one packaged side discharge system, and it would pipe water into the home instead of refrigerants. And so we see other countries even experimenting with highly flammable refrigerants because it's all outside. If it did say create a leak, you don't have to worry about those flammable refrigerants leaking in your home. It's all outside. And yes, there's still ductwork. Yes, there's still sizing issues. But the fact that we've now gotten all of that outside of the home, I think you're going to see as time goes on over the next 10 years, air to water technology play a bigger and bigger role here in America. We've always had hydronic technology and things like that, but it'll be interesting to see the way this takes hold more. It's a big thing over in Europe. It's going to be a bigger thing here in the States watch out for it. The biggest hurdle with this technology is heating and air guys. They've got to learn it. They've got to believe in it and take care of it because a lot of guys in our industry, they're lazy and they just fight back. They don't want change. They just want to go back to the way we did things in the eighties and use some of the refrigerants we used to use back then and so on. So I don't know if any of this is helping. I hope it does. I actually had someone ask for this video, say what's the safest system I can put in my home and it gave me this idea to compare some of these systems and some of the concerns you need to be thinking about. I will say as we wrap up this video, and that is there are some other considerations that are out there. It's not just the system itself, but you might want to be looking at things like the air quality in your home, the type of products that you can install with your HVAC system that can clean the air, filter the air, and so on. Another honorable mention are different devices that can control the humidity in your home. I'm not saying sizing isn't as important as it is, but when you've got other devices that can help 
mitigate that issue and really control the humidity, whether it's a dehumidifier or a humidifier. I'll put a link down in the description of this video of some of my favorite products, but that is also another thing you need to consider. And then finally, the last consideration is ventilation itself. A lot of the issues that we see in homes today and residential, especially if they would just dilute it with good, clean, fresh air being brought into the home, a lot of those obstacles would not be had. So what are your thoughts? Is the safety of a system playing a role in your decision making? I'd love to hear about that down in the comments section. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where we talked about a president elect Trump and the big five changes it might have on the HVAC industry. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.